they said I'm too small, or they said I can't do a specific thing. It's not realistic to, to count on someone to come back from ACL surgery and to hop in the rotation and to pitch in September. That's not realistic. That fueled me. But yeah, I just want to serve as, as an example to the undersized. Go chase your dreams. Go get it. Like, don't let anyone tell you anything. That's something I, I truly believe in. I'm going to be not only back, I'm going to be back in full effect. And a salute for Marcus Stroman. 5'8". He came up big tonight for the Blue Jays. Marcus Stroman was raised in Medford, Long Island, about an hour's drive east of New York City. My mom says I was a pretty much always smiling. I used to carry a basketball around and I used to dribble everywhere, everywhere. And I would just follow my mom around whether it was in the supermarket, I was always doing something that had to do with sports. Definitely a product of my mom and my dad. Uh, they, they, they definitely, I'm a spitting image of them combined. Hyper, you know, energetic. Uh, Love to run around, um, constantly playing with his sister, you know, into sports at an early age. His athletic potential was undeniable, but he'd need more than that. So his father pushed him through intense training regimens to instill discipline and fuel the desire to succeed. Marcus did want to be better than everybody else. And then, don't forget, growing up, he was smaller. You know, he was a little smaller than everybody else, so he felt he had to go that extra yard to prove to everybody that he's just as good. You know, he tells horror stories. I don't know if it's as bad as he makes it out to be. It was tough. Me and my dad, honestly, we, we struggled probably. We struggled for like the first 17 years of my life. As a kid, when you first start, you know, he's like, Dad, I don't want to do this, you know? And we would fight a little bit. I would come in, he would storm, and I'd go get him and make him run again. Well, I remember just sleeping over there. As a kid, you used to play video games all night and go to sleep. He's got us waking up probably like 7, 8 a.m. early. We're running, doing sprints. Um, I'm doing push-ups, sit-ups, bow flex, chin-ups. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, all right, finally I get to eat, it's over. I go down to the table, it's like orange juice, apple juice, pineapple juice, and protein pancakes. And I'm like, protein pancakes, really? I almost dreaded um, going out there and running hills or running with the parachute or dreaded doing reading comprehension from Newsday articles. He talks about that now. I know that when I watch Marcus and how he works, all that time when he's telling me I don't want to do stuff, the few times run those hills, it sunk in. Now I see why, why he did every single thing. It was nothing was, was meant out of bad nature. It was all to put me in the position I am today. So I'm, I'm thankful for it. Um, I wish it could have went a little smoother at some points, but that adversity, I think, helped me create the person I am today. That kid works. That kid never gets up. He'll fight to the end. You know, he's not the biggest dog in the fight, but the biggest fight in the dog, you know, and that's him. That hard work helped Marcus excel in high school sports. He enrolled in Duke University, a school known more for basketball than baseball. But it was Duke's academic reputation that Marcus found most appealing. In his three years at Duke, Marcus established himself as a can't-miss pitching prospect. With the 22nd selection of the 2012 first-year player draft, the Toronto Blue Jays select Marcus Stroman, a right-handed pitcher from Duke University. On this day, he becomes the first first-round selection to ever come out of the Duke University baseball program. He may be the steal of this first round when all is said and done. After just two seasons in the minors, Stroman made his major league debut in 2014 and fashioned an impressive rookie season. Heading into spring training in 2015, Marcus was being penciled in as a key piece of the Jays' starting rotation. Devastating doesn't even begin to describe what a huge blow this is to the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays really suffer a tough loss to take. From a performance standpoint, they probably lost their ace pitcher.
no cast on the leg, but uh, you seem to be uh, in some pain still. It was a regular day, and the pitchers and catchers were out on the half field just doing bunt plays, bunt drills, and sure enough, there was a normal play, and Josh Donaldson and Stroh were coming in at the same time. Trying to make a play on, a, on a, just a fundamental drill, spike catches, and, you know, I, I didn't know how, how severe it was at the beginning. He immediately grabbed his knee, and he looked like he was in severe pain. So right then and there, everybody's, you know, right off the bat, you, you know, you fear the worst. You're like, oh, you know, this looks really bad. You could tell it was something, you know, it was probably something serious. Uh, you know, he's, he's laid on the ground, and, uh, you know, there was really a, a hush over the, over the field. It was such a weird scene because he falls to the ground and holds his knee and then gets up and walks away. So you're like, hmm, maybe, you know, what they think it is isn't so serious at the time. With the severity of his injury still uncertain, Marcus was taken to the team doctor for further assessment. He's sitting in the cart while we're driving to the MRI and he's thinking, hey, I, I don't think this feels this bad. I might be able to try it tomorrow. Let's see how I feel tomorrow. Forget all this stuff, you know? And I'm thinking, okay, well, let's just see what this MRI shows first. After examine him, I said, I feel you tore your ACL. And he was in shock. First thing he did was pick up his phone and he pressed dad and said, I need to be alone. I get a call and he was, and I, I already knew in his voice because Marcus is not emotional and he was crying. They tell me I can't play. Just like my whole world just like, poof, just like came crashing down a little bit. Um, and I was mad, I was mad. I was upset that I felt like I, I had put myself in a position that, pre, that off season where I had taken myself to the next level. And once I got hurt, I just felt like all that had gone to waste. And then I felt like I had let my teammates down, all this has, and I just started to think about all these things and it just started to wear on me. I was by myself in the, in the doctor's office. I called my mom back after I took a second. I, I, I told her right away, I was like, mom, I was like, get me enrolled back into school. Calls me, calls his mother. He says, you know, I'm gonna be back there. I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna go finish and do. The second I tore my ACL, and the day I had my surgery, I marked my calendar September 19th. That was the six month mark, right? That's the, the ACL benchmark, supposedly. I feel like I was doubted the entire way through it. I didn't understand that. I wanted people to believe in me that I could do that. And I wanted people to, to truly say, Stroh's coming back this year in September. Returning to Duke allowed Marcus to finish his sociology degree while rehabilitating his knee. There was only one piece of the puzzle missing, his best friend. He called me and was just like, are you ready? I'm like, ready for what? He's like, to come with me. I'm like, let me know and I'll be there no matter what. Right after I found out I was going back to Duke, I called him and I said, hey, uh, I know you're working, like I know you, but I was like, I need you this summer. And he didn't even ask. He said, where are we going? He didn't even ask, what are we doing? Nothing. Ryan's just always there for him. My God, um, like I said, Marcus might not have been able to accomplish what he did down in Duke as far as rehab and going to school, who was the guy that, you know, left his job. And that was Ryan helping him get through all that. One of the first hurdles Marcus had to overcome was a date he had originally circled on his calendar prior to the injury. It's opening day for the Blue Jays. That was one of the hardest days that he's had, seeing his team back on the field to start the season and him not being able to be there. I didn't watch it for long. I mean, I watched, because I was supposed to be that guy, right? I was supposed to, in New York against the Yankees, um, opening day, would have been my first opening day in the big leagues. I would have my entire family there. So yeah, not being that guy hurt me. And it still eats at me. It still hurts me that I couldn't be on that mound for opening day. Marcus entrusted his rehab to Blue Jays consultant and Duke assistant professor, Dr. Robert J. Butler. They began what figured to be a long journey, but on that first day, Stroman made one thing clear. He was going to pitch before the season was over. Came in uh, really loud, 
and kind of like, where am I supposed to be, kind of thing, limping a little bit. And so we started off with just some questions about kind of where are you at with your process, where do you want to be. The things that stuck out to me were, you know, I want to pitch in September. He said, no, I, I'll do whatever it takes. He wasn't going to limp out there to start in September. He wanted to start in September ready and at his best. When we use the data, when we use the numbers to drive us, then we, then we tend to remove our bias as opposed to week 17 we do this or week 16 we do this. And, you know, it's no different than, than riding a bicycle and taking off training wheels, right? You take them off when you can. Well, we want to progress him when he can. I wake up around like 8 a.m., eat breakfast, foam roll, stretch out, uh, kind of get my knee going. I'd work out from 10 to 12. Then I'd, I'd go to class from 12.30 to 2.30. Right after there, I'd have baby bomb bomb, my friend Ryan just picking me up. Um, he usually have lunch ready on the go. We go straight to another workout from 3 to 4.35ish, crush a quick dinner, and then go to a nighttime class, and then kind of just repeat that process the next day. Pitching in the big leagues, it's a completely different life than from being in a classroom setting and having to kind of lock in there. But I know that my mother was beyond excited, as well as my father. After I got my diploma, they're like, hey, like, honestly, like, this is the best accomplishment that you've had so far. They're like, anything else after this is just, you know what I mean, icing on the cake. They're like, you've, you've succeeded everything that we've wanted, and you know what I mean? Just, it's, it's special to hear that from your parents. With his degree in hand, Marcus could focus on fulfilling his promise to rejoin the Blue Jays in September. There was a day in there, my knee kind of turned the corner, and I was like, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back this year, and I'm gonna be not only back, I'm gonna be back in full effect. First thing in the morning, like six o'clock, I would get a text. So, can I pitch today? Or then later that afternoon. So when are we thinking that I'm gonna pitch? You know, just any way that you could ask it, he probably asked it. Once it got to August and became crunch time, it was, it was really a matter of putting the pieces in place to, um, to line up. He had numbers which they don't see in football players. When they were doing physical therapy, he was doing therapy and they were saying, this is incredible. We don't see linemen doing what he's doing. Okay, okay. Marcus was ready to throw off a mound again, just five months after his surgery. Following successful rehab assignments, one final meeting with Blue Jays management would determine the fate of his remaining 2015 season. That point, it was obviously still up in the air. Being in that meeting, that was when they finally told me, hey, like, we're gonna give you the start, and we believe in you, we have the utmost confidence and trust in you, and just go out there and get it done, like, just like you know how. He had worked so hard from the time that injury happened to the time he set foot back in that clubhouse. Uh, for him to get that news that he was gonna be a starter, uh, you know, giving him up an opportunity to start for us down the stretch, he was overwhelmed, might have been a tear in his eye. Yeah, I don't know if he wants to admit that, but there was, a, there was a lot of emotion. I wasn't working out six days a week, twice a day to get back for 2016, you know what I mean? So when they told me that, it was just everything paid off. When he showed up, it was just a great uplifting moment, you know, not only because of the positive energy that he brings with him, but you know, you're getting a, a fierce competitor that's gonna be out there fighting with you. Marcus Stroman to make his season debut at Yankee Stadium in a pennant race, pitching in front of his friends and family. It's not often that a major leaguer can say in one season he got his degree from Duke University <laughs> and pitched against the Yankees. There could have been a 10-hour rain delay, and I still would have been as amped as I would to get out there. I was ready to prove a lot of people wrong. I read every single thing about what everybody was saying about me coming back, and he's not ready, he can't start, and... He can't do this. I had all that in my head. So I was just ready to get out there on the mound. Fiery competitiveness of five foot eight, Marcus Strong. It looked like he had pitched all year and he was in, in mid-season shape. For most people, that's like their first start in spring training. You know, they're not sharp yet. They don't have their feel. They have to make adjustments. They're making mistakes. But he was on point from the get-go. I think he surprised everybody. Stroman was outstanding in his four starts down the stretch and entered the postseason as the Blue Jays' hottest pitcher. Now John Gibbons gets another terrific start from young Marcus Stroman. 
So Marcus, are you doing the thing of rope imitation tonight? You're working fast, getting ground balls? Um, I felt good, you know what I mean? I felt like I had a pretty good tempo. Um, pitches felt great, sinker felt great. Uh, stayed in rhythm, and it was just exciting to get back out there with the guys, the brothers, and um, just feed off their energy and go out there and compete. During game four of the ALDS against the Texas Rangers, with the Blue Jays fighting to stay alive, John Gibbons made the controversial decision to use David Price in relief. That meant Marcus would start in a do or die game five. Knowing how good Stroh was and he could pitch that game, it allowed us to use David in that must win game down in Texas, you know, to, to even the series. You know, you look the way, you know, Stroh responded, you know, even he looked good in the first game and, and I had no doubts about him. He sent out a tweet on March 12th, two days after suffering the injury. It read, the return will be legendary. The 2-2 two -two from Stroh. The moment's not going to phase him. The to the third consecutive strikeout for Marcus Stroman. Just an incredible game. The Blue Jays continue to celebrate as they move on to the ALCS. You're never going to see another game like this. Look at this. This is special, man. This, I got my whole family, my friends here, my brothers. It's, it's, it's crazy. We have the best group of guys here. The camaraderie we have is unbelievable. We never get down. The Blue Jays to their first ALCS since 19. The Blue Jays fell two wins short of the World Series. Stroman's remarkable 2015 campaign was over. Less than a month later, he was back at Duke University, reuniting with his team of doctors with the goal of becoming the ace of the Blue Jays staff. Without these two individuals here, um, I wouldn't have been able to come back, back this past year. Um, Get emotional. <laughs> but no, this you're is the team. This is the team. I love it. Jason <laughs> Shutt, Nikki Huffman, uh, nobody else out there. No other athletes don't try to take them. Just exciting being back here, you know what I mean? I just try to stick to the people that I've been around and that have put me in the best position to succeed and be able to go out there and throw 200 plus innings this year and be that guy. So they know that. They know how motivated and how hungry I am to do the best and, and they're just as motivated. Can't fake results. coming for you, Price. Because <laughs> now my training methods are changed, my body feels better than it ever has. Now I feel like I'm primed and ready to go. It's a wrap from Duke. See y'all in New York. HDMH. The baseball world took notice of Marcus's dedication. In January 2016, he was in New York City to receive an award from the Baseball Writers Association of America. I want to thank everyone for showing up today to um, congratulate Marcus. Just excited to enjoy this, um, accept an award that kind of honors the, the comeback this year. Thank you guys for being here. Respect it. Shows the love he has. Hey, get in there, Big Daddy, son. <laughs> I'm going to speak right from the heart, and I'm going to speak to the people who are going to be sitting there. There's a lot of players in this game that are as talented as he is, intelligent as he is, but you're going to get a hard time finding any that have as big a heart as this kid right here. you got to have a heart award. 2015 goes to Marcus Stroman. Uh, it starts with my mom and dad, obviously. Um, my mom, you're my rock. Um, I wouldn't be in this position without you guys. Dad, everything comes from you. My mentality, my confidence, my work ethic. Um, I'm a product of every single person that's around me, every single person that's here today. Um, I truly wouldn't be in this position without every single person that I brought along with me today. And I truly thank you guys for that. Um, 
I do everything in my power to just bring energy to everyone I'm around and enjoy life to the fullest degree. Um, I realize I'm truly blessed to be in the position I am. And I really put life into perspective and I wake up every day with a smile on my face just to be happy and enjoy life as much as possible. Marcus, when you began your comeback, you must have envisioned nights like this. For Marcus Stroman, there will always be doubters. All this talk, David Price is gone. Can Marcus Stroman be the ace? There will always be those who say he's too short for this, too cocky for that. And that's fine by him. The chip on his shoulder doesn't weigh him down when he takes the mound. Off the field, he can only make promises. On it, he can make believers. Marcus Stroman makes his first opening day start. And he believes he's the number one guy here. He knows what a number one has to do. Strike three call, that's strike at the knees, and Stroman very animated as always. And that's the final out of the ball game. Marcus Stroman and the Blue Jays. What a debut in 2016 for him. I don't think the expectations that people have on him are even remotely close to what he puts on himself. He doesn't care how much pressure there is. He just feels confident about his ability every single day to deliver. He just He's like a kid. He's just happy to go out there. there there's nobody that, that enjoys what he does more, more than Stroman, it seems like, on, on the baseball field. And he makes you feel like you're in Little League again. He's got a huge heart. I think he's been told many times that he couldn't do something. You know, and his dad ingrained in him, you know, that's, that's not the case. You have, have your dreams and go for it. You know, his mom and dad did a wonderful job raising him. You know, he's got it really all together. And, and you know, we don't want to leave out the fact that while he was rehabbing, he finished his degree at Duke, which, you know, that says a little bit more about the kid, to be honest with you. I would never think I would sit here and say that I'm thankful for tearing my ACL, but I'm thankful for tearing my ACL. I got put in a position where I can go and finish my degree. It's just everything worked out perfectly. Everything does happen for a reason, and uh, just thankful that everything played out as it did.